Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at a past paper question from OCR Physics A from June 2011. This question is about a very, very typical experiment on magnetic fields. Just a little note before we get started that these are not official solutions and they're just my solutions. If you'd like to have a look at some official solutions and official mask schemes, please have a look at the OCR our website in the description of this video. Well, let's get started by solving this question. So figure 5.1 shows a rigid straight metal rod XY placed perpendicular to a magnetic field. The magnetic field is produced by two magnets that are placed on a U-shaped steel core and this sits on a digital balance. Normally with those experiments, there will be a resultant force downwards, which will tend to increase the reading. And we can use that to determine the magnetic force that is acting on the rod. Well, let's read for the rest of the question. Anyways, getting back to the question, the weight of the steel core in the magnet is 2.500 newtons. You can see that there's quite a lot of precision given in, in this reading, and the rod is clamped at points X and Y. Uh, this the whole thing is connected to a battery switch and an ammeter as shown so we have this little circuit over here and there's going to be current flowing from x to y we know this will be flowing from x to y because this terminal here is the positive terminal this here is the negative this here is the positive this here is the negative so we're going to have current flowing in this direction so i will be going from x to y. State the direction of the force that now acts on the rod due to the magnetic field. Well, because the rod, which is essentially a conductor, it acts like a wire, is placed in a magnetic field between those two magnets, then it will experience a magnetic force. We can use the left hand rule, Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction at which the force acts. We can do that because we know the direction of the current and we know the direction of the field. Now, just a, re just a recap of um, Fleming's left hand rule, which I've illustrated over here on the right. The thumb is your direction of motion, which is the force, the first finger gives you the direction of the field, the magnetic field, and your second finger gives you the direction of your current. So really, really important. Now, if we were to apply this to this diagram, and I want you to pause this video and apply Fleming's left hand rule to this situation right now. Okay, now that you have uh, applied this rule, you should be able to see that the direction at which the force acts on the rod due to the magnetic field is downwards. So we can just write in downwards, like so. So for the next one, the length of the rod in the magnetic field is 5 centimeters and the current in the rod is 4 amps. Assume that the magnet provides a uniform magnetic field and we have the flux density being 0.08 teslas. Calculate the force acting on the rod due to the magnetic field. Well, this is a classic question for F is equal to bill sine theta. I'm just going to write F is equal to bill sine theta. Even better because the field and the current are perpendicular. This would mean that uh, the sine of 90 will equal 1. So the equation will just turn into F equals bill. So our flux density is 0 0.08 multiplied by the current, which is 4.0 amps multiplied by the length, which is 5.0 times 10 to the power of minus 2 times the sine of 90, which is just 1. And um, this will equal 0.016 Newton when uh, calculated with a calculator. 
Now the next question or the next part of this question is really, really tricky and it's often the point at which um, you tend to sort of make a mistake potentially. So state and explain the new reading on the balance. So far we have found that the direction of the force that acts on the rod is pointing down. So the force on the rod, I'm going to draw that in blue, is acting straight down. So let's draw that again. So this over here is the force on the rod. However, this is not the force on the magnet. Notice that the, uh, the circuit is clamped independently. It's not connected in any way to the magnets. Let's see whether we can remember Newton's third law, which says that when two bodies interact, they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. So this means that in this case, the two bodies are the rod and these magnets that if there's a force on the rod pointing downwards, there'll be an equal and opposite force acting on the magnets by Newton's third law. So the actual force on the magnets will be upwards. So let's be the force on the magnets. And this is really counterintuitive. This means the new reading on the balance will be 2.500 minus our force, which was 0 0.016 minus 0 0.016. And this will mean that there'll be a new reading of 2.484 Newtons. We can explain this by saying that the force on the magnets is upwards due to Newton's third law. Okay guys, now for part D, the rod is replaced by another rod of the same material having half of the diameter of the first wire and the same length. The potential difference across the rod is the same. Calculate the force on this rod due to the magnetic field. Well, first off, due to the resistivity equation, if we were to reduce the, if we were to half the diameter, because the area is given by pi d over 2 squared, the resistance will do the opposite and will also increase by a factor of 4 because it's d squared down here. So r increases by a factor of 4. Remember though, v is equal to ir, therefore i is equal to v over r. So if r increases by a factor of 4, the current will decrease by a factor of 4. And if the current decreases by a factor of 4, because F is equal to Bill, the force will decrease by a factor of 4. So this is really, really important. And because our force was 0 0.016, our new force will just simply be uh, 0 0.016 divided by 4, which, of course, gives us this number, 0 0.04 newtons. Hey folks, well, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.